In this next lesson, we're going to focus on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Now, this is starting to bring together everything we've learned so far this chapter. Let's take a look at adding and subtracting mixed numbers. When we add and subtract mixed numbers, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract the fractions. We're always going to do that first. Then, we're going to add and subtract the whole numbers. The reason why we have to do the add or subtract the fractions first is because sometimes we're going to have to do some regrouping or renaming with our fractions. Other times there might not be a fraction in that fraction area and we're going to have to create a fraction by borrowing from a whole. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few problems. In this first problem we're going to add our fractions first so this will go pretty straightforward. We're going to add 1 plus 2 fourths, 1 fourth plus 2 fourths, so we get 3 fourths. And then we go and we add our holes and we get five and that's it. That fraction is done or that mixed number and that sum is complete. For the next problem, notice it's a subtraction problem so we need to subtract. We look at our fractions first and we see that five sixths is in fact greater than two sixths so we can subtract. Five minus two gives me three so I have three sixths and then four minus two gives me two and that one is done as well. Now for this next problem, I want you to notice when we're subtracting five holes minus two and a third, there is no fraction here. We're missing our fraction. When we're taking away a fraction, there has to be a fraction that we're subtracting. So in this case, because there is no fraction, we need to create one. In order to create a fraction, we have to borrow from our whole. So our whole is a five, and we're gonna borrow from that just like we would if we were doing any sort of subtraction. Let's say we had, 23 minus 15 and we borrowed from our whole number and we reduced that and then we carried over 10. In this case we're not borrowing 10 we're just borrowing one whole. So when we're borrowing one whole we need to identify what one whole is equal to as a fraction and that fraction on the bottom is going to help us identify that. So the denominator is 3 which means one whole in this case is going to be equal to 3 thirds. And we borrowed a whole, which means that that 5 is going to change to 4. Because 4 plus one more whole would give us 5. Now, we can subtract because now we have a fraction for both our numerator and our denominator. So 3 thirds minus 1 third gives me 2 thirds. And then 4 minus 2 gives me 2. It's super important that when we borrow our whole, we actually subtract a whole from that whole number. We can't just create a whole and not subtract anything. So we really need to make sure we cross that number out and put one digit smaller, just like if we were doing any sort of subtracting and we'd have to do some regrouping. All right, let's take a look at these next few problems. I want you to go ahead and add these next three. Now, it's really important to keep in mind that fractions can't be left as fractions greater than one. So when we add, if we're left with a fraction greater than one, we have to change that into a fraction that's not greater than one. So if we're doing our first problem, we're gonna add our fractions first, and we're left with eight sixths, and then we add our whole numbers and we have four. Now notice how eight sixths is a fraction greater than one. That eight is greater than its denominator of six. So what we need to do is we need to pull out the holes in this fraction greater than one. And this is the same type of steps that we just took in the last lesson when we were changing those fractions greater than one to mixed numbers. That's what we really have to do here. Now the easiest way to do this is to pull that hole out and then have that remaining fraction. So what we're gonna do is we need to pull out our hole in this case, our whole would be equal to 6 6 because our denominator is 6, and then we would have 2 6 left. Now this 6 6 is equivalent to one whole, so I need to add this one whole to my whole number that I have here. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to have 5 holes and my 2 6 left. So I started with four and eight six, but I couldn't leave it like that because my fraction was greater than one. So I needed to pull out my whole and then do some rewriting in order to be left with five and two six. Let's look at our next problem. We're gonna have to do something similar here. So when we add our whole numbers and when we add our fractions, what do we end up with? We end up with seven fifths in our fraction and then we end up with seven wholes. 
Now we can't leave 7 fifths like that, so we need to rewrite this as our wholes and our fractions. So we're going to rewrite this as 5 fifths plus 2 fifths. And our 5 fifths is equivalent to 1 whole. So now we need to add this 1 whole and our 8 wholes together, or 7 wholes together, excuse me, to be left with 8 wholes. And then we bring our remaining fraction of 2 fifths down. So our final answer is 8 and 2 fifths. Go ahead and do the next problem. Add your fractions and add your whole numbers. When we add our fractions, we're left with 8 eighths. And then when we add our whole numbers, we're left with 10. 8 eighths is equivalent to 1 whole. So we can go ahead and we can replace our 8 eighths completely with 1 whole. And then we add 1 whole plus 10 wholes, and we're left with 11 as our final answer. All right, that's our renaming if we're left with a fraction that's greater than 1. Go ahead and answer our first question for us. Make sure you're identifying, is it an addition problem or an, a subtraction problem, and then solve. For our first pr problem, we're doing some subtraction. So 5 sevenths minus 4 sevenths, it gives me 1 seventh, and then 8 minus 5 gives me 3. And that's my final answer there. Go ahead and solve your next problem. This problem is an addition problem, so I'm going to go ahead and add. When I add my fractions, I'm left with 7 fifths, and then I add my whole numbers, and I have 8. Can I leave 7 fifths as 7 fifths? I cannot. I need to change this because it's a fraction greater than 1. So I'm going to pull out my whole of 5 fifths because my denominator is 5, so a whole is equal to 5 fifths. And then 5 plus 2 gives me 7. And now I'm going to rewrite this. 5 fifths is equal to 1 whole, so I'm going to cross that out and bring my 1 whole on over. 1 plus 8 gives me 9, and then my 2 fifths comes on down. And that is my final answer, 9 and 2 fifths. Go ahead and solve the next problem. We have 6 minus 2 and 2 fourths. Now before we can subtract here, we have to do some borrowing from our whole because there is no fraction. And when we're adding and subtracting fractions, there always needs to be a fraction for us to add or subtract. So I'm going to borrow from my whole, and that whole is going to become 5. And then I look to my denominator at my other fraction, and that shows me that there's a 4. So 1 whole is going to be equivalent to 4 fourths. And now I can do my subtraction. 4 fourths minus 2 fourths gives me 2 fourths. And then 5 minus 2 gives me 3. And that's my final answer there. I have three more problems for you. Go ahead and solve the first one, 7 minus 3 and 1 third. For us to solve this problem, we have to do some borrowing again. So we're going to borrow from our whole. That's going to become a 6. And then I look at my fraction down below to identify what one whole would be equal to. In this case, it's going to be equal to 3 thirds. And now I can subtract. 3 thirds minus 1 third gives me 2 thirds. 6 minus 3 gives me 3. And so that is my final answer. Go ahead and solve the next problem. This is an addition problem, so we're going to go ahead and add 4 thirds plus, or 2 thirds plus 2 thirds gives me 4 thirds, and then 4 plus 2 gives me 6. Now I can't leave 4 thirds like this, so I need to change it to 3 thirds plus 1 third, and my 3 thirds is equal to 1 whole. So I'm going to take my whole and add it to my whole, which gives me 7, and then I'm going to bring my 1 third down. So that's my final answer, 7 and 1 third. And then the last problem, go ahead and solve that one. I'm going to add down 1 fifth plus 2 fifths gives me 3 fifths, and then 9 plus 6 gives me 15, and there is nothing extra I need to do to this problem. I don't have a fraction greater than 1, and I didn't have any borrowing I needed to do. All right, let's look at two word problems quickly. The driving distance from Mr. Laster's house to school is 7 and 6 tenths miles. What is the distance round trip? What does round trip mean? 
Well, round trip means he's going there and then he's coming back. So if one trip, it says the distance from his from school to his house is seven and six tenths. Well, then the distance back is also seven and six tenths miles. So we're gonna need to add seven and six tenths plus seven and six tenths. Go ahead and do that now. When we add down, we left with 12 tenths and 14. And we can't leave 12 tenths, so we need to convert it to a, our whole and then what's left over. 10 tenths is equivalent to one whole so I'm gonna take my one hole and my 14 holes and I need to add those together to get 15 holes and then I have my two fifths left that I can't, or two tenths left that I can't forget about that. And so Mr. Lasseter drives 15 and two tenths miles round trip. And our last problem says, Renee used two and two six cup pineapple juice and one and four six cup orange juice to make a smoothie. How much pineapple juice and orange juice did she use? In order to solve this problem, we need to add. So we're gonna add two and two six plus one and four six. And then I wanna know how much pineapple juice and orange juice does Renee use? When we add this, we left with six six for our fractions and we have three here. Now we can't leave six six like that, but six six is equal to one whole. So now we can add one whole plus three more, and we're left with four cups. So Renee uses four cups of orange juice and pineapple juice to make her smoothie. All right, that's our lesson for today. A few takeaways, things to remember. When we are adding, we cannot leave a fraction greater than one. So we need to pull out our whole, and then we need to add our wholes together. When we're subtracting, if we have a fraction on top or a whole number on top that doesn't have a fraction next to it, well then we have to do some rewriting and we have to add that fraction there just like we did in this problem here. We need to make sure we identify what that whole is so that we can then subtract. All right, that's our lesson for today. See you tomorrow when we do some regrouping with subtraction with our mixed numbers.